Uh, today is Tuesday, Cinco de Mayo, 2015. This is a regular meeting of the Los Angeles Board of Police Commissioners. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Good morning. Let the record reflect. Commissioner Silbroff, Madison, Figueroa Villa, and Saltzman are present, and we have a quorum. Number one on the agenda, commission comments. Uh, I do have one this morning. Uh, Commissioner Madison and I uh, were able to attend the Chiefs LGBTQ Forum last week. Uh, it was extremely well attended uh, by members of the community, very positive uh, discussion. Uh, we were joined by City Attorney Mike Fewer. There were, by my count, over 40 uniform personnel <coughs> there, plus quite a few not in uniform, <coughs> plus uh, representatives from the Sheriff's Department and also from the airport police. Uh, and it all in all was, was very positive, and I think uh, just want to acknowledge the work of Chief Kamala uh, as the LGBT liaison for the chief uh, and also uh, the, the new liaison in the community relations office as well, uh, whose hard work clearly made a difference in this case. And finally, uh, as I have before, acknowledge Chief Beck's leadership on this issue, which I think uh, this comes top down and I think uh, he deserves great credit for his leadership and the tremendous strides we're making with this uh, LGBTQ community. So thank you. Any other comments? Okay, let's move forward. Thank you, Rob. Item number two, the report of the Chief of Police, Chief Beck. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Commissioners. Uh, first part of my comments, I want to recognize the loss and extend the sympathies of the entire Los Angeles Police Department to our brothers and sisters in New York over the loss of Brian Moore, uh, a very tragic incident highlighting the, uh, the dangers of police work. Uh, we also uh, lost a, uh, a uh, icon within the LAPD uh, this past week, Franchon Blake, uh, passed away at 93. Uh, Franchon was uh, one of the originators uh, of, uh, uh, of the consent decree that changed the way the Los Angeles Police Department uh, promotes hires and retains women and, and made a, a huge impact which, which allowed uh, uh, so many uh, great, great police officers uh, to, uh, to become members of the LAPD. I also attended uh, over the weekend the, uh, the California Police Memorial uh, Services. May, of course, is, is, uh, is Police Memorial Month. Um, and there were, I uh, attended uh, ceremonies on, on uh, Sunday night, the candle lighting uh, services, and then the actual uh, services where the, the, uh, the names are re revealed, inscribed on the, uh, on the monument in Sacramento. Uh, Governor was there uh, at both events, as was our Attorney General uh, and the uh, presiding judge of the uh, California court. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, last year was a very, very Tragic year for Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, we lost uh, three officers in the line of duty. Their, their names were all added to the police memorial. Um, you'll remember uh, Nick Lee, Chris Cortillo, and Roberto Sanchez. Uh, their widows were there with me, as long as their, as well as their immediate families. Um, I walked all three of them up individually to the memorial to, uh, to place uh, flowers on the memorial. Uh, when they were, and after which they were greeted by the governor. It's a, it's a very moving ceremony. Uh, there were 13 law enforcement officers killed in line of duty across the state of California last year, and three of them were from the Los Angeles Police Department. Uh, we also, uh, uh, our Police May Day uh, last week uh, went without event, uh, a very well uh, handled event. Uh, you know, uh, I always say that the the day of the uh, the day of the event is the is the least of our worries. It is the days leading up to it that are important. Uh, the partner the partnership between the uh, the various promoters and there were multiple uh, of the of the marches that joined together, and uh, the um, uh, particularly Chief Perez and 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 his staff uh, was remarkable. They coordinated well, and we had to, due to that uh, we avoided the issues that occurred in many other uh, cities up and down the West Coast. Uh, we had no arrests uh, that I'm aware of on May Day uh, related, to the, um, related to those events. 
Saturday, we had the, uh, as, uh, as all of you know, uh, and, and as was attended by uh, Commissioner Figueroa Villa, we had the Safe Summer Tip-Off, which, uh, which signifies the start of Summer Night Lights uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the city, uh, was attended by several thousand uh, young people who were fed and got uh, various safety tips and safety fairs, and uh, ended with a uh, basketball game between LAPD's number one team and the fire department's number one team. It was a great event. Well attended, and uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Guess what question I'm going to ask? Who the winner was? Yeah. The winners are the kids of Los Angeles, uh -huh. Steve. <laughs> what a diplomatic move. We, well, won, we won by 22 points. It was fun to watch. Well, uh, you know, 24, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and it is the sixth year that the Los Angeles Police Department oh, okay, has okay. won <laughs> in a row. So we had a, a moment of graciousness there. And, uh, well, you know what, I, as everybody is aware, the chief is very competitive at certain things. <laughs> and, and, uh, and my basketball team, who I'm immensely proud of, and, and you know, I, I hate, I don't want to digress here, but, uh, but I will. Uh, <laughs> they play all over the city. They have played in every housing development in the city of Los Angeles, in the gym, with Good the residents. Know. They have played uh, in, uh, in, uh, midnight basketball tournaments all over the city. They are they are a, they are great ambassadors for the Los Angeles Police Department. They're they're just nothing but the finest cops, who also happen to be very good basketball players, and I'm and I'm very proud of them. Great. Um, so maybe, and this coming weekend is our gun buyback. Uh, the mayor uh, is uh, through the gang reduction youth development office is again. Uh, sponsoring our gun buyback. I want to uh, uh, make sure that uh, that everybody is aware of that and we uh, get as much participation as possible. It's one of the many things that keeps LA safe. And then my final thing is it, it is Teacher Appreciation Week. You know, without, without good teachers, um, all of us, uh, all of us would be, would be poorer off. And I want to, I want to thank all the, the folks that that have a, a true calling and teach the, teach the children and young people of Los Angeles because like police work, it is a difficult job, oftentimes a thankless job, and one that, uh, that I certainly appreciate. And I'll be very brief on crime. Uh, we had a good, a good week, we gained a point, so uh, we have a total part one crime increase of 13.5% rather than last week's 14.5. Homicides are down uh, by 9.1%. Um, so that that's the uh, that's the positive news. News, however, every other crime category, including property crime, uh, is up in the city of Los Angeles. Shootings are also up. A victim shot uh, up uh, twenty percent, and that is true uh, throughout the four bureaus. Gang-related crime, uh, except for gang homicide, is also up uh, twenty-three percent. Traffic collisions, I'm going to highlight one thing I think is important. There's been a lot of discussion about how effective um, the, uh, the use of uh, pedestrian citations is and, 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 and questions about why the LAPD uh, enforces pedestrian uh, violations, and, and I was going to highlight a little bit of that in my comments. Uh, traffic collisions, uh, we've had uh, 15,795 so far this year that are reportable. Uh, that is as compared to a little over 14,000 last year, an increase of 12.5%. I'm not that happy about it. The, uh, the, the total uh, number of uh, folks killed in traffic accidents uh, so far this year is 54. That's as compared to 59 last year, a, a reduction, but still not enough of a reduction. Out of those 54 deaths, 29 have been pedestrians, uh, uh, significantly over half, uh, and that highlights one of the reasons that we issue pedestrian citations is because pedestrians are so vulnerable, and and proper um, uh, proper obeyance of traffic laws makes them safer. And so, as with all traffic enforcement, our goal is safety. Our, our goal is to make the streets safer. And pedestrian, um, pedestrian behavior is, is one of the ways that we can have the biggest impact on saving lives uh, through traffic enforcement. 
personnel on payroll, uh, we have uh, 9,888 sworn personnel on payroll, 27,012 civilian, over 400 reserves, 371 specialist volunteers, uh, 61 chaplain counselors, and 6,081 cadets. And that concludes my report, and I apologize for its length. Thank you, Chief. We do have two public comment cards. We have uh, Prentice Jenkins and Mr. Herman. Good morning, Commissioner. Uh, First of all, I'd like to say that uh, the uh, homosexual stalking of me by gay firemen, which you know you have them, huge numbers of gay firemen in the our department has continued the gay stalking of gay cops in the helicopters. You haven't done anything. Maybe you are doing something about it. Maybe the chief is doing something about it. He just probably needs sort of thing takes time. Uh, I noticed there are no cameras today. Everybody's <coughs> bored. The media is bored of you now, bored of all of us. I believe we're witnessing, witnessing an event with black men being slammed on the ground and their spines being severed and things like that. We are witnessing an event of, of gay cops getting out, stopping black men, and grabbing their genitals, and then the fight starts, and you know who's going to win that fight, the guy with the gun. Uh, if you go to YouTube and type in firemen stalking people, you'll be shocked at what you see. St type in cops stalking people, you'll be shocked at what you see. I believe we need a, uh, you said you got 29 pedestrian deaths and you're issuing citations to pedestrians. And yes, that's true. I've seen pedestrians walk across the street on red lights. They're crazy. There are people that are crazy out there. Stop at the red light, watch, look at the red light, and then just walk across it. I'm shocked they, they weren't killed. I've seen it dozens and dozens of times, but I've also seen uh, uh, automobiles get in the way of the, uh, of the crosswalk. Why, aren't you, why, why don't you have cops down there catching people, stopping people from coming up on the sidewalk or, 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 or preventing them from coming up on the sidewalk? I believe we need a subcommission of people like us who come in here and testify. We need a subcommission, uh, Chief. I'll uh, leave that to you. Hopefully you'll do something about it. Next. that will resort to educating our officers through the most appropriate training available in the state of the art of Los Angeles. We, the public, demand your interest, Chief Beck, not in the concerns of what happened in the past, but to address the issues today. Appropriate training, efficiency in training, and start it now today, not later. Your report indicates we've become the hit and run capital of the world, Hollywood Highland, John Walsh, has said it over and over and timely at City Hall. And now Batman has returned to suffice and to criticize at will those who proliferate our communities with nonsense of deceit. And from chapter seven of Shakespeare as Batman read, a caption only of it, to educate us all. Thank you teachers for helping Chief Beck become the next chief of police. And thank you, Americans, for now amending our rights to practice that we are in the line of duty for justice for all and the responsibility to suffice the public and your constituents. Ne thank you. Thank you. Next. I mean, uh, Item number three, report of the executive director, Mr. Tifank. 
Good morning, Mr. President, members of the commission. Uh, again, just one brief item to remind the public of the next uh, community meeting of the police commission, uh, which will be held on Tuesday, excuse me, Thursday, May 28th, 2015 at 6.30 p.m. It'll be um, in council member Mitchell Englander's district at the Shepherd of the Hills Church, 19700 Rinaldi Street in Porter Ranch. And that concludes my report. Thank you. We do have one public comment card, Mr. Herman. Mr. T. Frank, I want to thank you for bringing us the calendar, week to week events that go on in our community. And we're looking forward to more town meetings. Or <coughs> that's the old language. I guess today's educated language has to do with uh, <coughs> public interest meetings. But we don't want to do so in a time when people are being killed or injured in the city of Los Angeles. We want to utilize our calendar to promote officers retrain, retraining, adequate retraining. But better, I speak on behalf of the American people that our officers of rank and file need that raise now. Not in increments, now. Rank and file deserve their raises now. Send the message clear, Mr. T. Fank, as you and I sit into safety meetings along with the other constituents from Encino, Mr. Spindler, and even better, the gentleman, advocate, advocate Herman from City Hall that we address the calendar to assist our rank and file for a potential automatic raise that we must sit down with the mayor as he's done in the past with other union members and said oh here's your raise what about our poor officers and their families who want to see them on a timely basis Mr. Sobroff you don't think they don't want to sit home on a weekday with their kids reading books Talking about Batman, the Avengers. So to all you officers, we hope Eric, our city, the mayor, takes accountability and listening to us here in, in public comment. Because the calendar of Mr. T. Fank will address these issues eventually, and we will have town meetings representing all your constituents. I, the stakeholder of Los Angeles, California, the Golden State. Hoorah, hoorah, thank you. Item number four, the report of the Inspector General, Mr. Bustamante. No comment, Commissioners. We do have two comment cards. We have Mr. Herman and Prentice Jenkins. <sighs> Mr. Bustamante. Been a long, anxious month. Now that we got the judicial courts on our side with $20 million in a practice of providing body cameras to protect all the residents here today, all the, a lot of empty seats as we fan the cameras across the crowds. But in all respect to our fallen officers, we must do things in the interest of justice. State versus the people to say to you, we demand action by the attorney general and you, the inspector general, to investigate the claims of abuse towards civilians. Jack, are you here? Jack, I'm here. But again, when your practice of investigating whether it's a constituent homeless man, whether or not it's an investigation probing into the lies of an invisible Batman who lives in Los Angeles. Just remember, it's all in the name of public interest and in all due respects, I love teaching, Mr. Chief Beck. So without hindrance of the Brown Act, Mr. Inspector General, I ask that you investigate on behalf of many constituents' rights under ADA, which stands for the American Disability Act, whose rights are being violated by Mayor Eric Garcetti for the record, as Mr. Silberoff there will not contest, that the problems, violations, compliance of the Brown Act is in the hands of you, Mike Fuhr. Remedy the problem now and today 
Wayne Mancino, thank you. Item number five consists of information items and filed items relative to noise variances and special event permits. Well, I apologize, we do still have Mr. Prentice Jenkins. This is the face of psychosis. This is what firemen actually look like. And when you see them on TV giving interviews, many of them look like this guy. <coughs> but this is what they really look like. I've given this to you, Chief. That this is my research. This is what all firemen look like. This is their actual personality. This guy right here. These guys, these people are dying inside. They commit suicide. They seen too many burned bodies. They seen too, many, too much death, and no one's doing anything about it. They can't get they can't get psychological help. This is a, this is exactly what a fireman, all firemen look like. That's why they stalk people. See, post traumatic stress changes your personality. If you were in the women, now you're in the men. It is a recognized mental illness, and every last one of them suffer from it. That's him. That's your fireman. No matter how many times you see them smiling, that's who they really are inside. And they're dying inside. And they can't get any help. Because if they get help, they'll get fired. Because you can't have a crazy fireman in the police, in the fire department. So they run up and down the street chasing my penis. Yes, there are many, most of you firemen are gay. Homosexual firemen in the police, in the fire department. I know you don't want to hear that. They're on the down low. They've been on the down low for a long time. Why do you think there are not a lot of black firemen? There's a reason for that. This is what your firemen look like, and this is the ones that continue to stalk people. Go to YouTube and, and put in firemen stalking people. You can laugh if you want and check, out what you, and, and, and check out what you find out. You'll find it. You think that's funny? I hope the cops catch your son or your, or, or, or your, your, your uh, uh, husband one day, one night, kick his butt, see how you feel. Item number five consists of information items and filed items relative to noise variances and special event permits submitted for the period ending May 1st, 2015. Item number six, presentations. Do we have any presentations this morning? None today. Thank you. Item number seven, consent agenda items. These items are considered to be routine and non-controversial upon which the board is provided with adequate information for approval without inquiry or discussion. Would a commissioner wish to pull an item as special for discussion, 7A through 7F? Move approval of items 7A through 7F. Second. All in favor? Aye. Item number eight, regular agenda items. Would a commissioner wish to pull an item as special for discussion, 8A through 8D? Move approval of 8A through 8D. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, we're now on the item number nine, public comment period. We have two cards at this moment. We have George Bazzetti and Prentice Jenkins. My name is George Bazzetti. I am the former director of policy for CORE California while Celeste King IV was alive. On April 18, 2014, Detective Perez from LAUSD PD called me and attempted to get me to admit that I had called Tamar Galatson, LAUSD board member and assistant LA City attorney, with three obscene and threatening phone calls, PC 653M, that I did not make on December 23rd, 25th, and 31st of 2013. On January 20th, 2013, Detective Perez knew I did make, not make those phone calls as a result of the search of my phone records with a felony as required. To this day, no one has searched Tamar Galatson's phone records. This is where the phone number of the actual caller is located. On core California letterhead, as director of policy, I sent emails on this color of authority violation to the LAPD and LADA Public Integrity Divisions, Chief of Police Charlie Beck, yes you sir, and the California Attorney General Kamala Harris on April 21st, 2014. Subsequently, I called the LAPD OIG and requested that I, and he requested that I go to the local LAPD station at La Brea in Venice to file a complaint. With a complaint, the investigation could begin. 
The watch captain did not take a complaint after he cleared me of any complaint or record. I falsely assumed that was the end of the matter. I was arrested on October 28, 2014 at the LAUSD boardroom by LAUSD PD. I was then booked at an LAPD substation and falsely imprisoned. I was never offered or given the opportunity for the three phone calls within three hours of booking when in LAPD custody. Next. This is a 14th Next. Amendment violation of the determined by Carlo versus City of Chino. Okay. Prentice Jenkins followed by Mr. Ted Hayes. As I said, Chief Beck, we need a subcommittee made up of folks like us. You folks out on the street. I'm, I know Commissioner Sobroff, he's not, he ain't hanging with the homies. I know he's not. You folks aren't on the street. You need a subcommittee of people <coughs> like us. That's what you need because we're, we're actually out on the street. That's a very important thing to, 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 to develop a subcommittee of people like us. I tell you. Time after time, you one of the best chief we've had, and I had I've got a in, enormous respect for you. Once I found out that back in the '70s you were getting rid of bad cops going undercover, that gave me a newfound respect for you. You do go after bad cops. The reality is this: this is the study that I gave you. You have these studies. Have you looked at them? That's what your firemen. That's what your firemen look like inside. They're just, they're just faking it, all those smiles. I, I once knew a guy who told me that, that, they, that they go off on their own, cops and firemen, and take the bullets out of their gun and then put it to their head and click it. I couldn't believe that f c firemen and cops did that, but they do. They'll click it to their head until they get tired, put the bullets back in, and then walk out. Sometimes they don't take the bullets out. We know that what that leads to. I'm talking about a subcommittee of people like us. I, I, I'll, I can actually put the, uh, uh, the proposal together, but you do need a subcommittee of like us. You do need, need a subcommission sub of people like us, folks, because you're not on the streets. So how are you going to talk about the streets if you're not on the streets? This study right here you have, take a look at it. Alcoholism, abuse among police officers, serious widespread problem. It says studies estimate that one quarter of all police officers in the U.S. suffer from it. 250,000 of them. Drug addiction. Thank you. We have no other public comment cards. We're now on item number 10, closed session. The Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into close. Oh, I apologize yeah, again. Ted Hayes. Hayes. <laughs> Mr. Hayes. Sorry, sir. Sorry. Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, there is a danger from removing your talking points too far from Doe Gates who reported to have said in 92 that if the next time you need a cop, call a hippie. Well, I attended a meeting on Know Your Rights, which uh, the uh, sheriff, McDonald, was supposed to be there. He never showed up. But nevertheless, one of the statements by your officer representing the department was that when the in question was asked of him, what should, how should you handle yourself when you're stopped in your car by an officer? His response was that the officer will ask you to leave your car. Okay, you know better than that. That's not a request where you say, oh, maybe I will, maybe I won't. That's an order, that's a demand. If people were to assume because of the high rank of this officer that being asked to leave your car is what happens, that's entirely wrong. And if a person believes that and chooses not to leave their car, that escalates the situation. So that's a kind thing to request the person to leave the car, give them the option to or not, but that's not correct. And we shouldn't be so accommodating in order to be nice to people nowadays, a new LAPD, that we give them information that may result in some difficulty for them as well as the officer. I was amazed by that comment from that officer. He'd been on the force for 18 years, had a high rank, but his talking points were completely off target. Uh, the fact that the sheriff didn't show up was quite interesting. But anyway, I'm taking that up with the sheriff's department. Just to prove to you I'm not picking on LAPD alone. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Hayes. Thank you. Now we're in item number 10, closed session. The Board of Police Commissioners will now recess into closed session to discuss item numbers 10A, B, and C in accordance with Government Code 54957. Okay, open session and closed session item number 10A1 was discussed and the chief's recommendations were unanimously adopted. In closed session item number 10B was continued and in closed session item number 10C was continued. Mr. President, is there a motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. Aye. Aye. Favor? Aye. 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 Let the record reflect the meeting is